the polycystic life of BBs. It's me, Bianca, and I'm back with you as promised, giving you an update um, on my recovery from my recent surgery. Um, if you've watched any of my last videos, um, you would pretty much have an idea as to why um, I had my surgery, but if you're new, I know I don't have many subscribers, but if you are new, welcome. I'm so happy to have you, and I hope that um, you enjoy watching the videos and you watch the last two videos because that would give you a really good background um, as to what my channel is all about. And uh, just as a quick overview, oh, I got to pause one second. Ah, sorry about that. I had to cough, and uh, I have to hold the pillow when I cough because it hurts so bad. So, and I'll tell you about that later. Um, but just as a quick overview, I just recently, on the 11th, so just this past Tuesday, had a um, operative hysteroscopy to remove uterine polyps and to go ahead and give me a DNC, which is a dilation and curatage, uh, to remove the, the lining of the uh, endometrium inside my uterus. And also, I had a full um, a diagnostic and operative laparoscopy for uh, discovered endometriosis uh, and also I have PCOS so that the doctor went ahead and did an ovarian drilling and you know checked my tubes and made sure that they were flushed and clean and open and so I'm all good now I'm cleaned out the surgery went very successfully and again this is just my third day and I just want to give you an update um, because the third day is when you are support supposed to start uh, really feeling the effects of the healing and feeling the relief from the gas that the co2 gas that is trapped in the abdominal and the thoracic cavity um and so as of right now currently oh and again guys um i'm not going to get into too much detail about the surgery uh because like i said if if you watch those last two videos you'll kind of have a little bit of a background and in, in the of me and my diagnosis of PCOS and the the full surgery and how it went. Um, and if you want to skip some of my talking, you can kind of fast forward. And <laughs> I tend to babble on. But okay, so me, my healing, my recovery, I'm feeling good. Um, of course, I'm upbeat right now uh, because I'm on some strong pain meds, just like in the last video. It has only been, um, it's only halfway through the third day of recovery, so you're not going to be 100%. But I'm feeling a lot better, and I can feel the changes every single day. Um, and I'm actually going to take these off because there's a huge glare on them. But actually, I'm putting them back on because they look cuter. <laughs> so with the recovery as far as the gas, um, so if you watched the last video, you know that they have to pump my stomach up with CO2 gas. And the gas is uh, then kind of trapped into your abdominal cavity. And as it's trying to escape, you feel pressure in the shoulder, um, maybe sometimes in the back and like this kind of like area up here and in the upper um, abdominal area. And so with that, it kind of causes pain with breathing and you kind of feel like these sharp pains and stuff. So with that, that has actually uh, improved a whole lot. Uh, again, I'm, I'm only halfway through the third day and I do still have some of that discomfort but it's a lot better, um, definitely a lot better and I don't feel as much discomfort um, the second night, I actually was laying there, like, kind of, like, in tears because when I laid down flat, it was like all the air was coming up to my shoulders, and it was very, very painful. Um, I'm not having that, and I couldn't lay on my side, which sucks. So I literally had to lay, as I'm sitting right now, straight up, I literally had to use all the pillows on the bed and uh, basically sleep sitting straight up. Um, and so I'm finally over that. I feel much better in that regard, but I do still feel some of the pressure. Um, also another symptom, um, that is getting a lot better is the uterine cramping. So some of you girls, um, that have had the procedure are going to have the procedure, maybe having both the hysteroscopy and the laparoscopy. Um, and again, remember the hysteroscopy is when they go up into the, uh, uterus through the cervix into the uterus and, you know, do whatever they need to do down in your uterus. So for me, they scraped and removed all that thick lining to get it out and so they could biopsy it. And uh, so I'm uh, having some bleeding, of course, just uh, just like a normal light menstrual cycle. Um, and that's gonna, of course, keep on for about the next six weeks after surgery. So you might as well get used to that and buy yourself a nice big pack of maxi pads because that's not going anywhere. But um, the bleeding has been normal. It has gotten a little heavier since uh, surgery 
commenced, so it wasn't too bad. Um, Tuesday when I got home, it was like almost midnight, so I don't really remember much, but Wednesday and Thursday, it wasn't too bad, and then um, today, it's a little heavier, but it's still not, uh, sorry, I have a hair on my lip, it's still not to the point where I need to call the doctor and report. Um, it's not like a heavy, heavy, but I'm still having that, having the cramping, which I am trying to control with ibuprofen 800. Um, if you have the procedure, your doctor will usually prescribe you the ibuprofen 800 and will also prescribe you another type of painkiller, um, such as like Tylenol 3 or acetaminophen 3 or something like that, which is like a mixture of codeine. I'm not keen on taking very strong pain meds, so I choose to try and just take the Motrin 800. Um, and I think that kind of bit me in the butt today because I just took the Motrin 800 before bed last night. And I woke up with cramps, and it's been a little harder for me to get them under control now. Um, so uh, that's unfortunate. But other than that, I am feeling upbeat. I'm feeling well. I still don't feel as if I can really go out and walk around a store or really even drive or anything like that again. It's only day three post-op. So girls, if you do have this procedure or you're going to be having it, listen to the doctor. Don't try to go out and, you know go to the grocery store. I know some of you are moms and wives and um, some of you may even just be, you know, single and living by yourself and got to do your own thing, but try your best to do those things before. Um, and I am going to actually go over like a few tips that I would suggest to anyone that has recently had the procedure or someone that's going to be having the procedure. There's some tips that I have to give to you, some things I did before and, uh, and after surgery that have really helped me out a lot. Um, I'm thinking, thank God that I did them. Um, so what else am I missing? Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I look a little bit more upbeat now because I just felt like, you know what, I've been looking crazy the last few days. I literally have had nothing but bed shirts on. And I'm going to show you actually um, what I'm talking about. Like literally, I haven't worn anything else but these kind of like pajama type shirts and they're like little gowns open on the bottom nice loose flowy my stepmom actually bought me this one which it's actually my new favorite one I really love it um but I've been wearing these types of things for the last few days so I just felt like you know what I'm gonna get up and take a shower and I'm gonna put on uh some tights and like a regular shirt obviously I can't put on jeans or anything some people might be able to after the third day of surgery. For me, it's still way too tender um, in the belly button incision and all that. So I'm not even going there with that. But I do have some black tights and just a plain black tank top. Uh, you can see that I'm just wearing just plain, nothing special. And it just makes me feel a little bit better, like I don't look so bum-like. Um, and then also I went ahead and rolled the computer chair into the bathroom and just kind of curled my hair a little bit. Nothing special. I haven't washed my hair since like Monday. So, and you know, you're not supposed to wash your hair every day. It doesn't stink or anything, but I just felt like, you know, I'm just going to try curling it. It'll make me feel better and I'll feel like I look a little bit better and I won't, I don't know. I just feel like it makes me feel less down that I'm in the house not getting any vitamin D. So, um, that's the update on my recovery. Again, my, my actual follow-up Appointment is not until next Wednesday the 19th. Um, is that the 19th next Wednesday? Yes, it's Wednesday the 19th. And so, is Dathan messaging me? <laughs> it's next Wednesday the 19th. So, um, I will, of course, update you guys on that. Um, and again, any pictures or anything that the doctor shows, I'm going to definitely update that. I do want to tell you girls, um, or guys, or whoever's listening to this video, if you're getting advice for yourself, like I said, or getting advice for a family member, um, a wife, a girlfriend, a spouse, whoever, whoever's watching and is is wanting to know um, how I'm doing after and knowing the after effects of surgery, there's a few things that I want to kind of suggest and a few things that I want to tell you. Um, that way you'll be prepared if you're having this surgery um, or if you have to have it in the future because unfortunately some of us um, girls that have endometriosis and PCOS, Hey guys, I'm so sorry that I got cut off there. Um, and I'm going to add this clip in so it may seem like it's 
not the same, but it is going to be the same. Um, but basically what I was going to say is that some of us that have endometriosis um, and PCOS or just endometriosis may have to have this procedure or this laparoscopy surgery more than once. It may be medically necessary um, just because of the extreme pain levels that we're having and also some of us that unfortunately um, would face any type of fertility issues. Um, like I mentioned in the last video, such as you know, anything that grows around the fallopian tubes or on the ovaries can sometimes cause those issues. And so some of us may have to have this procedure more than once. So I want to give you some, some suggestions, uh, some things that I did in regards to, you know, just preparing and things that I learned after the fact. And things I'll definitely keep in mind if I ever have to have the procedure again. I certainly hope I don't have to. I don't want to, but... Um, you know, it is what it is if I do. And, uh, okay, so this is going to be the end of this video. I thank you again for watching. Bear with me. I'm new to this. Um, my filming skills are not the best yet. I literally have my phone propped up on a water bottle right now. And I don't even think I'm looking directly in the camera because, like, of the way my phone is. But thanks for watching. If you are watching and dealing with me, I promise you it's going to get better. Um, I'm trying to learn and my boyfriend is actually trying to help me learn and uh, trying to, because he doesn't know anything about video ed editing. He's an engineer, so he doesn't know anything really about this. But, um, I don't, you know, it's me. It, it's not changing the, the story I'm telling, you know, my sucky skills. That's not going to change anything. I'm going to keep putting my story out there. And then when I get to the point where it's perfection, then it'll just be even better than it is now. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'm going to upload a video right after this one in regards to my suggestions for laparoscopy, hysteroscopy surgery, or any surgery that you're going to have that's going to kind of, um, you know, make you s sort of immobile um, for at least a week or two. Okay, thank you. And again, remember my slogan, girls, if you have PCOS or even endometriosis, the cystic life chose us. We did not choose that life. And it's okay, though, because we'll deal with it and we'll get through with it. So well wishes, love to you all, and I will see you in the next video.